Welcome to the farms.com risk management marketing school video series. This is our fourth series out of 26 this year. This video being sponsored by DeKalb Brand Seeds, uh, trying to help producers do a better job of educating you about grain marketing and commodity marketing. Um, in this fourth video series, we're going to be talking about seasonality and past trends and long-term trends and give you some more tools and some uh, uh, more information to help you do a better job so that you can be a better successful marketer. Uh, so let's start off with an example. In this example, we're using corn. You can see here in, t in any typical year, whether it's 5, 15, or 30 years, uh, corn tends to bottom somewhere in the, around that uh, beginning of October, and then it has that seasonal rise where we tend to peak usually around July 1st of any given year. So we seem to have the same pattern almost every year, whether it's 5, 15, or 30. In our next example, using soybeans, and soybeans has a similar seasonality as corn does. We tend to bottom around that beginning of October, and then we rise right into about July 1st of each year. Now, of course, every year is a little different. There's some years where um, that seasonality doesn't play a role. Let's have a look at canola. Canola, a little bit of a different seasonality. If you look at these charts, you can see that through um, May it tends to peak, tend to fall as, as we get into that July, August, and then again through the, the fall months, winter months, it tends to rise again as well. But you know, in 2010, as an example, a lot of grains were actually hitting lows through the first half, which typically rise, and then in the second half, we were actually rising. So it was a counter-seasonal year where uh, the, the, the prices were doing the opposite of what they normally do. Let's look at uh, Chicago wheat as another example. And wheat's a little different than canola or corn or beans. And you can see that we tend to have that low right through harvest, and then we tend to rise. It's a post-harvest rally. And then we can typically peak around that March. And sometimes it will peak through June, depending on what some of the other grains are doing. Um, if we look at our next example here, which is Kansas, I believe it's Kansas City wheat, you can see kind of a similar similar pattern to that Chicago wheat. And then in the final example, we're looking at Minneapolis wheat, um, where it uh, has a similar example to that Chicago and that Minneapolis. In fact, um, all three of these contracts in 2010 hit a peak on March 1st, which if you look at the seasonal chart says that's typically a normal peak for these um, uh, commodities. Now let's look at some long-term charts. Long-term charts can actually help you look to the past and, and give you some idea of um, what the highs are, what the lows are. It gives you, you know, an idea of where we're at today. Is it a good price, bad price? Should I do something? Maybe should I pull the trigger? How do I manage that risk? So in this example, we're looking at corn again, and we're going all the way back. It's it, it's about, uh, I believe it's 39 years plus. So we tend to peak around that 550 to 750, depending on the year. The lows seem to be between two and three, although the last five years, uh, the low seems to be more like three, 350 than a two, only largely because we've had uh, more demand, particularly from ethanol. In our next example, we're looking at beans. Got a similar example here where we've got um, uh, the highs being over 39 years, 10 to about 1650. It's a wide range. Uh, so, so this is, again, use this as one tool as part of your arsenal to help you do a better job. It's just one in many that we're talking about throughout the whole 26 video series. Um, over that 39 period, uh, years, uh, the low seems to be around that four to six dollars a bushel, although the last five years, uh, the low seems to be a little higher probably closer to that um, seven to eight dollars on the beans. In our next example we're looking at canola. Now this chart doesn't quite include 2008 and, uh, and by the way all of these charts are available at www.mrci.com for a small subscription fee and that small subscription fee is well worth it in in my mind. Uh, again canola over 31 years uh, you can see the highs in that 500 to 750 a metric ton over that 31 year period. The low seems to be 250 to 350. And again, over the last 
a five years to low seems to be closer to four, 450 a metric ton. In, uh, this is, I don't have a seasonal for oat, unfortunately, but this is a long-term chart for oat as an example. And um, so again, over a period of 37 plus years, oat, the highs are in that 350, 450, the lows in that same period, one to 150. And over the last five years, maybe closer to 152 because of that global demand is starting to um, give you a, a higher plateau than you've seen in past years. In our next example, we're looking at a long-term chart of Chicago. Again, over 39 years, the high seems to be that 7 to 13, uh, the low 2 to 3, last five years 450 to 550, a little higher plateau. Kansas City, kind of a similar pattern. Um, over the past 35 plus years, Kansas City highs are 7 to 14, uh, the low over 35 years is two to three, and then the last five years, 450 to five. So, you know, if you look at Minneapolis suite today, or sorry, Kansas City in this, this example, you know, we're trading around that 950 to almost $10. So, you know, we're, we're at the upper end of that 35 year period. Maybe it's time to start pulling the trigger. What are the other fundamentals telling you about Kansas City wheat? It can help you uh, determine whether you need to pull the trigger here. This is Minneapolis. Um, and over that 31 plus year period, the highs 8 to 25. 25 once, an extreme case in 2008, 31 years, the low 250 to 3, last five years, maybe 5, 550, a new higher plateau. Now, uh, in this next example, what I'm trying to show is the correlation between corn, beans, and wheat futures. So the, the light blue is wheat futures, the black is corn futures, and the dark blue is soybean futures. And you can see that. Um, you know, uh, if you're bullish one commodity like corn, can you be bearish another commodity known as beans? Not necessarily. A, a rising boat lifts all tides. But sometimes, for example, in this wheat example, when we had that Russian grain ban this past year, it can outperform some of the other commodities. But if you buy time, over time they'll all catch up with each other and kind of perform. Why? Because they're competing for that feed. They're competing for export demand. They're competing for acres. Uh, and, and so that's why they tend to all rise at the same time. In summary, seasonality and long-term trends, uh, past trends can help you avoid the bottom and help probably or hopefully uh, help you pull the trigger at the very top. Remember, nobody rings the bell at the top for you. Nobody's going to call you and say it's time to sell. This is just another tool in your arsenal so that you can become a more successful marketer. Uh, we can manage the risk, we can manage the volatility, but we can't predict the future. I always ask, what is your marketing plan? In our next video series, we're going to look at USDA supply and demand balance sheets and how to use those balance sheets, what to look for in order to help you do a better job of that marketing. Until next time, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit more about uh, seasonality and past trends and hopefully we shed some light and insight on how you can become a more successful marketer. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.